Hey everybody, welcome back. Today it's time for Pottery Review. This is the kind of video that I've been thinking about doing where I take pieces mainly that I made and I talk about maybe how I made them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And for this first edition, I'm going to do wood firing number one, the pieces that I kept and why I kept them. So let's go. All right, here we are with four pieces that I kept out of my first wood firing. And there were plenty more that I would like to have kept and probably some that I still may keep that I still have. But for now, these are four of the ones that I decided to keep and not necessarily because like I said, they're the biggest or or, or the, the, the grandest I should say, but they're unique in a certain way that was attractive to me. And I said, you know what, I, I wanna keep that for whatever reason, and I'll explain some of those reasons now. But uh, I've got a pitcher here, as you can see, I've got a, a tumbler, uh, um, a bowl, and a coffee mug. And there were several other pieces, as I said, that I thought about keeping, but uh, you know, there's the balance of, okay, well, what am I gonna keep? And you know, what am I gonna sell to make sure that I pay for the kiln that I built? So, so we'll start with uh, this tumbler. This is a, uh, a tumbler that I made, or as I told my nephew, it's a ceremonial uh, sweet tea vessel. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, it's a tea glass. It's just a fancy way of saying it. This tumbler actually my wife wanted to keep. So some of the main things that I like about this are number one, the grooves actually in the clay in the, in the midsection. So as you're holding the, the tumbler, you can actually use those as a kind of help grip the tumbler. The shape of it I like, it's a really simple form uh, and also kind of narrows in the center which helps you hold the tumbler if you're drinking out of it. Uh, this was a combination on the outside uh, of just raw the salt glaze on the bottom, the raw clay. I did uh, white slip dots, I did a, a black slip and then I actually also put, um, I believe I put uh, uh, iron ash glaze and then I sprayed some of my uh, uh, ash, my other ash glaze that I use here as a transition to get some of those drips. So there was multiple applications of slip and glaze to this piece. It's also lined with the soft blue that I use. Uh, but this combination, actually, one of my first wood firings with my friend Joseph that I did, I did a tumbler that had a combination of this black slip with the white slip dots and that iron ash glaze. And my wife really liked it. And this one, I did that black slip in kind of like a wavy pattern. Uh, and then I did the dots kind of in between all those waves. So it kind of made like little pockets here where the black slip is not showing uh, or where, where it separates. And I did the white slip dots in between those. And so it gave a really nice pattern of alternating between the, the dark slip lines and then the white dots. And that, that just really made a neat pattern. Uh, as well as, like I said, just, just having a, a nice tea glass that you can drink out of that, that feels so good in your hand because number one, it was handmade. Um, just the texture and, the, and the, uh, the finish on this is really nice. And then, uh, like I said, uh, just we both really enjoyed it. Had, I had actually had a pair of these and I told my wife, I said, if you want both of them, you better take them. But she said, no, I'll just take one of them. So I sold the other one in my kiln opening and uh, she decided to keep this one. So uh, I liked it as well, but uh, it was mainly her decision to keep this one. And uh, that's why, so there's number one. All right, now on to number two, we'll do this coffee mug. And I decided to keep this coffee mug because of the design that's on it mainly. I had never done this design before. I fired my wood kiln for the very first time. I had done combinations of this uh, dark and white slip, uh, as you saw in the previous piece. And I've done that you know, for several years, uh, but I've never done this exact design. One of the things that I've realized about working with slip is that to make the designs that I really like and that I think look nice is you have to have really smooth, quick, confident lines that you draw with a slip, which also means that your slip has to be very fluid in the slip bottle. There can't be any chunks in it, so it has to be kind of freshly sieved. Uh, and then to work with it in a sense that you're making, like I said, those smooth, confident lines and that's what I did with these dark slip lines. On this side, you can really kind of see the lines and I kind of went from, from right to left here and I kind of did the lines real quickly and even got a little slip on the handle, but I wasn't worried about that. The, the lines actually start here and go up and around. Uh, and then on the other side, I did the same kind of lines, but they connected kind of down here at the bottom. 
Uh, but then this side of the mug actually was facing the front of the kiln. So it got the brunt of the wood ashes, the natural fly wood ash that's in the kiln during the firing and also the salt that we blew into the kiln. So it got a really nice coating of that salt and the drippiness and, and the real kind of fluid look on this side. And that kind of pulls with it some of that dark slip. The white slip dots have enough clay content in them that they don't really move. They kind of gloss over and get real nice and shiny. But the but the dark slip, the red and the black, the two different dark slips that I use, those have enough of, a, a, one has a lot of iron in it and the other one has iron and manganese in it. And both of those melt under the conditions usually of firing, especially if they get salt or wood ashes on them. On this side, you can see where it didn't get much salt or wood ash. They kind of stayed in place, but they're also there's not much 3D-ness to them like the white slip dots are. Uh, but like I said, mainly because this was the first time I had done this design and being in the first firing, uh, I just had to keep one of my mugs that came out with this design. I actually haven't even drank out of this mug yet. I thought about it this morning and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to be making this video today. So I decided not to drink out of it yet. So it's not even been used yet. Uh, but I definitely will probably tomorrow. I'll, I'll make my coffee tomorrow morning and finally get to use this mug for the first time. Uh, it's been sitting out here in my shop, kind of held back for me because I knew I wanted to save it. Uh, so this one, like I said, I looked at it when I was doing the Etsy and I thought, no, I can't put that one on Etsy. I decided I wanted to keep it so because uh, all my mugs sold very quickly on Etsy, uh, which I'm super thankful for. But I decided I wanted to keep this one and I'm sure you guys can tell why it's a beautiful mug. All right, now on to number three, we're gonna talk about this bowl. This bowl has the actually very similar uh, design on the inside as the previous coffee mug. As you can see, I did, uh, and I think I made a video about this last year as well when I was decorating these bowls. I was doing the, the dark slip lines and then the white slip dots, and I did some with the white slip lines and dark dots. I have one of those still available as well uh, that I was like, well, should I keep two of them or just one? But for right now, it's just this one. Uh, but this one was was just the raw clay on the outside and the same as with the coffee mug as I turn this you can really see the variation of the of the uh, design on the outside just where the raw clay got uh, you know either got blasted with the salt and the wood ashes on this side or even on the back side where it got nice and toasty brown just from the, the flames moving across the piece and a wood kiln really give a lot of different look and texture and, uh, and designed to a piece that you just can't duplicate any other way. Uh, and also on the bottom where you have the wads of clay, that's another thing I love about wood-fired pieces is you get these, these nice kind of round dots there and they get the flashing around them where you get the salt and then you get this really nice toasty brown color that's right around where the wads were. And you get a little bit of that on the side of the piece as well. You get a really directional uh, look to pieces and if it, on a nice curved bowl like this, you can actually see kind of where the, the color changes and it does it in a in a kind of a curved pattern because of the shape of the bowl. Uh, but the inside of the bowl I did, like I said, with those dark slip lines that I did real confident, smooth uh, lines, and then I did the white slip dots under uh, in, inside of those lines. One of the one of the things I was thinking about in doing these slip designs is that I wanted to do the dark and light slip uh, uh, decoration together but I really needed uh, kind of a contained area to do the slip in. So by doing the dark slip lines and then the white dots inside of those lines, it kind of gave me a little bit of a uh, kind of a vehicle for those white slip dots to be, you know, a pattern for those to be in. I was thinking of all different kind of ideas of how to use these slips together. And then also this one was lined with a, a clear glaze that I have. And then I also put a little bit of light blue glass in the bottom as I placed it in the kiln. And so that melted and kind of blended in with the with the uh, with the clear glaze, and you get this nice little hue of light blue in the bottom. And so overall, like I said, I, I love this bowl. I haven't even used it as, either, but uh, I'll take this inside and decide whether I'm going to use it or just keep it for uh, display, or I might even keep it out here in my shop just to just to have to inspire me and uh, and to think about and look at from time to time. All right, number four, which is last but definitely not least, is this pitcher. And uh, to be honest with you, I, at first this wasn't my favorite pitcher out of the whole firing. So I'll tell you the main reason why I decided to keep this pitcher. 
It's because as I got ready to load the kiln, I had all the pots glazed and ready and get ready to load the kiln and, and Cam uh, was here helping me load the kiln. I, uh, I got ready to, I got all the pots that getting ready to go on that first layer in the very back of the kiln on the floor. And I, I grabbed the first pot that I was gonna put in. I put the wads on and I get ready to place it. And I'm like, hey, Cam, hold on a second. Uh, take a picture of me placing the first pot in the first firing. And so I picked up this picture and I wadded it and I was getting ready to set it. And he took a picture of me placing it in the kiln. And I uh, didn't think a whole lot about it. I knew I wanted to have that picture, but I didn't think a whole lot about it at the time. And then as I was unloading the kiln, I get to the very back and I get to the bottom shelf while unloading the kiln. And I'm like, wait a minute, I need to remember that that was the first piece I placed. And that's gonna be the last one I take out. So this picture was the first pot placed in the uh, wood kiln for the very first firing. And it was also the last piece I took out of the kiln as I was unloading it. Uh, the other really neat thing about this piece is that the, the glaze that's on it, this uh, kind of slate bluish green glaze that's on the top is a glaze that I've used a couple different times in my gas kiln and it always turns out a matte green color. And it's a, it's a nice color, but I had never tested it in a wood firing. And so I put it on a few different pieces in the wood kiln and I'm telling you every single piece that it was on, I love how it looks because it does not look anything like the the, the pale like uh, matte finished green that it looks like in my gas kiln. And so the combination of that, uh, that slate bluish green color on the top and on the inside, and then on the, on the sides as well, I get the, I sprayed my ash glaze down here so to get those drips and those runs and also the transition from this, this bluish green to the brown and the drips and then the color of the clay on the bottom. Uh, there's just so many things I like and I've learned, uh, I've, I've come to love and admire about this picture. Also, it has a little bit of uh, uh, crystallization build up in, in, in the transition area here. You can see there it's got some crystals that built up and I'm not sure if that has to do with the, 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 uh, you know, the oxides in the green or, or just the, whatever it is. The cooling cycle for, for the kiln always changes how glazes look. And so somewhere in the process of this cooling, those little crystals kind of grew and, and uh, they're not very big, but it just adds that little extra element to this. And then I love the color of the clay on the bottom, this toasty brown, uh, and you get the, uh, the kind of the variation of that. And of course the bottom is same. Overall, I just love the picture. I love the look of it. I've always, uh, I've always had kind of a fascination with pictures, and uh, I think they're just very the pieces that I I love that because they're usable, but also they're very decorative if you make them nice. I've been playing around with different designs of pictures over the last few years. I've done some with the with the bird beak where it kind of sticks out above the the rim of the picture, and then I've played around with just these standard pictures that have the spout made as you make the picture, uh, and then also played around with my handles a little bit more. I really love how these handles look and uh, adding the thumb grip to the, to the handle really makes a change in how the handle looks and also how it feels in your hand. Uh, it's just a very nice picture overall and uh, I'm super glad now that I decided to keep it and I'm super glad now that also this was the first piece placed in the kiln and the last one out uh, because whichever one that was gonna be, I probably would have kept it, but I'm super excited and glad that it was this picture. All right, guys, there you go. Pottery review number one in the books. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you did like about it, maybe what you didn't, or maybe your thoughts of videos I could do similar to this in the future. And I was thinking that maybe in the future I could do a review of a piece that we made in a previous episode. And uh, that would be a neat way to show the finished product outside of a kiln unloading video, take a detailed look at a couple finished products that I made in a previous video. I think that'd be a really neat way to show the progression of the pieces as they get finished and then talk about what I like and what I don't like about them. I know in this video, I didn't say anything that I don't like about these pieces, but I kept them for a reason, right? So uh, this was an all positive review of these pieces, and uh, but I kept them for a reason and I really like them and I hope you do too. And uh, thank you guys for being here as always, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye. Hello, everybody. Wow.
what's happening. Hey everybody, welcome. <clears throat> Hey everybody, and welcome to Pottery Review. Hey. All right guys, there you go, Pottery Review. <clears throat> Woo, okay.